I'm here live at the uh, Barber Boxer event. Come and enjoy. Um, it is hosted by the Institute of Global Studies and Bancroft Library. Uh, and we're here with Senator Barbara Boxer. Thank you. Oh, sorry.
principles of her bravery as she actually discusses some of her most difficult choices, including being one of only 23 votes against the Iraq War Resolution in the Senate.
$1.6 trillion industry. And it's beginning to feel the effects of this crisis. So, right now, the check and balance in this year is in the courts. We have to have all these legal entities that are taking on the job. In 2018, it's our first chance to go to the ballot box. And I am just saying right now, I don't want to ever hear you. I will tell you, but this is just a book. <laughs> I don't want to ever hear you describe a midterm election as an off-year election.
wins, I'm really concerned. <laughs> Call. 
don't live there. I think it's a waste of time. What isn't is if you know someone who does live there. Wow, that's really important. But um, I think you want, on any issue, contact the leaders. And in terms of knowing 2018, that's a softball question. If you go up on barbaracbobster.com, or if you go up to DSCC or DCCC, I guess the dot orgs, um, you'll find out which senators are up in 2018. And you will know immediately by reading material. Look, information is power. You will know immediately, ask the question, take Sherry Brown, Ohio. Look up his record, he's stellar. He's fabulous, he fights so hard for the middle class and the poor and the dispossessed and for the environment, all those good things. Sherry is beautiful. He's from Ohio, tough state. Help us, Sherry. Send him two dollars. Send him a dollar. Get everybody send him five dollars. Go up on his website. Tammy Baldwin, the first open lesbian to win a seat in the United States and Wisconsin. Trump won that state. Help her. So you can become a very important person in this country for the 2018 race. And you know, one of the things that somebody suggested to me.
what do you want to do? I want to be president. Well, that's cute when we're running the offices. <laughs> but it's not cute later. You want to do something. And how did I get, and I'll go to the first question. What got, I was a stockbroker. I hate to say it in this group, on Wall Street. Oh my God. But those were the years when it was like, and I was advising widows and orphans on what to do with it. It was very small practice. And I was going to go back to that, and all of a sudden I had my children, and the war in Vietnam was raging, and I thought the world is falling apart. What am I going to do? It was that aha moment that I talked about. What am I going to do? I can't just sit back, and Kennedy was assassinated, and, and, and Bobby was assassinated, and the whole world was Martin Luther King. I think the church was talking about it, and it just said to me, no, your, work, your life has to mean something. It has to mean something. And I was fortunate. Look, I had my spouse who said, okay, <laughs> okay. And my kids were too little to tell me what to do. <laughs> so they had to go along with it. Um, so I was lucky, but people saw it in me an earnestness, the, the truth, that I really, I didn't know where it was going to all be, and I started out by organizing against the war in Vietnam and putting a ballot on, a measure on the ballot in Berlin, which was a Republican county then, way back, way before you were born, and basically said, get the truth out. And so through the ballot box, we passed it, and Nixon was president. We set this thing off to him. Now, did it have any force? No. Law? No. But believe me, they noticed it. They said, well, here's essentially a red county in California, a red state, and they want to win this war. Wow. So, get those nine rules. Be authentic. Do something that motivates you. Now, it should be something that also other people care about. I mean, I wake up in the morning, <laughs> and they say,
last question, I think, comes from a student who took me, got an A, and thinks he's entitled to any question he wants. Uh, so here's his question. Was, we end on a light note. What was it like to work with Amy Poehler on Parks and Recreation? Oh, that's, that's well, one of the most fun parts of my job, and one of the rules of the architect that you've got to have a sense of when you saw my incomplete connotation, you have to, or you just, you're not going to make it through the day. You have to have a sense of humor. And one of the good things for me representing the whole state is I represented the entertainment industry. And I always fought for intellectual property rights and the right of songwriters to get paid fairly and all the rest of it. Uh, actors to be treated right. So they kind of liked me, and so they started asking me to be in different movies. And I had these little tiny cameo appearances in certain little things. That's one of them. Amy Poehler is just great. And what I found, and, and I worked with Larry David too, who's just an absolute genius. And, and I love Larry David because more people came up and thanked me for my role on Larry David's show than any legislative work I ever did. <laughs> Thank you. 